Pathfinder 2nd Edition is known for dynamic and tactical combat encounters. In fact, that's probably why you picked up the game. But can the same complexity be added to social encounters? And should it? Let's talk about the influence subsystem today on Galorian in depth. If you find this content helpful, please like and subscribe. It really encourages me to continue to create more videos. Uh, leave a comment below and we can continue a discussion. Thank you very much and now on with the show. Social encounters are a curious topic with many different ways of implementing them into your game. But first you must ask yourself if you are trying to challenge the player or challenge the character. When you challenge the player, you are asking the player to come up with reasons and logic and then present them in a compelling way. This method does not require any mechanics or any roll of the dice. It is simply speaking as your character would speak using the knowledge that you have acquired throughout the game. However, when you challenge a character, you are testing the abilities and the skills that that character has on their character sheet. This may include diplomacy to make an impression, intimidation to coerce, or deception to lie. Both of these methods are simple, they're easy to use, and they have their benefits, and you could throw them at any point during your game. But sometimes you want a more rich and dynamic social encounter, something that is pivotal to the campaign. Perhaps the player characters need to meet with an influential politician or perhaps they need to make their case in court. In these situations, you don't want the result to hinder on one roll of the dice. The Pathfinder Game Master Guide introduced the concept of influence subsystem. In this subsystem, you work as a team to gather influence points. With enough influence points, you can sway the person that you are speaking with. This does take some preparation, including creating an influence stat block for your NPC, but it can also be very rewarding. Influence is a short-term subsystem wherein the PCs accumulate influence points during a social encounter with an NPC to represent their increasing influence. The influence subsystem divides a social encounter into rounds, with the number of rounds representing the length of a social event. Rounds last any amount of time that you determine depending on the needs of the narrative, though somewhere between 15 minutes and an hour is typical. During each round, each PC can act once to either influence or discover. During influence, you attempt to make a favorable impression on an NPC to convince that NPC to support you. You use a skill check, but this skill check is not necessarily diplomacy like you would expect. We'll get into that in a moment. On a critical success, you gain two influence points. You gain one influence point on a success. You gain nothing on a failure, and on a critical failure, you lose one influence point. With the discovery action, you can use perception to carefully study and watch an NPC to learn more about their preferences. You can learn what skills may be used to influence the NPC, or what personal biases they have, and any sort of resistances or weaknesses that they may have as well. To better understand how this works, let's use an example and build a social encounter using the influence subsystem. In this example, the PCs own a ship. They want to sail through the shackles, but they need permission by the Hurricane Queen herself, Tessa Fairwind. As a GM, you may want to consider the goals and the motivations of the NPC as well as the skill set of your PCs. This may be an opportunity to highlight some of those lore skills that your PCs have. Also consider the reputation that the PCs have made for themselves thus far in the adventure. 
Does the NPC want to talk to them? Is she indifferent? Does she like or dislike the PCs? Is she willing to negotiate? Consider the setting for the encounter too. How much time does the NPC have to discuss with the NPCs even if she wants to? Is the NPC distracted with other priorities? In this example, the PCs have arranged a meeting with Tessa Fairwind, the Hurricane Queen. The PCs have not yet built a reputation with her, and Tessa does not know them, but she is willing to give them a few moments of her time. The PCs will have five rounds to convince her to aid them. There is no influence stat block that exists for Tessa Fairwind, so we will have to create one. In Pathfinder 1st Edition, Tessa Fairwind was a level 13 bard. We can use level 13 as a baseline. We know that Tessa Fairwind is a chaotic neutral half-elf. We'll give her a perception of 23 and a will save, plus 23. We'll use sailing lore, society, and perception as possible skills that a PC can use for discovery. Now we can look at different skills that a PC could use to influence Tessa Fairwind. Sailing lore or nature may be of vital importance as she loves to sail in the open sea. Performance could also come into play if a PC wishes to perform a sea shanty for her. Religion could be important, as her own mother was the priestess of Calestra. Notice that Diplomacy actually has the highest DC on the list. It is always an option, but others may be better. Some NPCs are resistant to certain tactics or biased against certain type of people and may get defensive when certain topics come up. Any of these make it harder for a PC to convince them. For instance, Tessa Fairwind has long been opposition to Chiliax, so any signs that a PC is aligned with Chiliax or Asmodeus will increase all of the checks of influence by 5. She also dislikes politics despite being in her position as Hurricane Queen, so using legal jargon or exposition will quickly bore her and increase all the checks by 2 as well. Attempts to use Intimidation will also increase all the DC checks by 2. Most NPCs have at least one weakness that a clever and observant PC can use to their advantage. Whether this is a deep-seated insecurity, a desire for power, a favorite hobby, or a bias towards a certain group. When a PC incorporates an NPC's weakness, it typically decreases the associated influence check by two or more. In this example, Tessa loves hearing tales of adventures at sea. If a PC tells of a sea adventure, reduce the sailing lore and the performance lore by two. If a PC shows alignment or worship to Calestra, reduce the religion DC check by two. Some NPCs might also have a penalty. A penalty occurs when a PC attempts a skill check or other form of influence that backfires. In this example, Tessa Fairwind does not like being deceived. If a PC fails in their deception check, Tessa will immediately end a conversation. She is also known for seeking vengeance for those who betray her, and this might have future consequences in the campaign. You will also want to establish the influence thresholds. The influence thresholds are the number of influence points required to influence the NPC and the benefits for meeting them. Some NPCs might have multiple influence thresholds, granting the PCs additional benefits or favors as they cross more thresholds. In our example, if the PCs can amass at least four influence points, then for one month, Tessa will grant free passage through the shackles free of interference from the free captains. If the PCs can amass at least six influence points, Tessa will grant unlimited passage through the shackles as long as the PCs make no hostile actions against the free captains. 
if the PCs can amass 8 influence points, then Tessa will instruct the free captains in the area to come to the aid of the PCs if they ever come under attack at sea. If the PCs can amass 10 influence points, then Tessa will have the free captains precede the player characters and secure the passage from any hostile forces. Hopefully this example helped you understand the influence subsystem of Pathfinder 2. Have you used it in your campaigns? Is this something you might want to implement? How do you use social encounters in your campaigns? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, happy gaming.